Hey YouTubers, I'm here working on a 2013 Ford Escape SEL 2.0 liter engine, EcoBoost engine. This video is already diagnosed, so it's going to be pre uh, pre-diagnosis video. I'll try to make my videos a little bit shorter. Um, so, pretty much the vehicle came in with two problems. One of them was the uh, remote start not working, and the second one was pretty much a, a check engine light. The vehicle came with three codes. Uh, currently, is only showing one. Uh, you know, just you know, just for the fact that I erased the codes to see if um, if there were codes that would come back quickly, or would it, or it would probably take time. But the only one that came back as soon as I erased them and, and I started the engine was the uh, P018C fuel pressure sensor B circuit low. The other two codes were uh, a P0106, it was a map of range performance. And the other one was a P0236, which was a turbocharger boot sensor, range performance fault. So pretty much those two codes were uh, correlating to each other. So like I said, so far the one that came back was this p 0 18c so pretty much what i did I, you know i went into the uh data i went to data stream and i'm uh, actually using my encore otc scan tool it's the first time i use it i bought this scan tool about the same time as the uh launch x431 pro mini about three four months ago I'm using this one, you know, just for the fact that the OTC Encore gives good, uh, good information for the American vehicles. So I'm gonna select PCM. I'm gonna go into the uh, fuel system. I'm gonna select. Pretty much the, uh, the pits that I need. So I'm gonna go into the low side. Fuel rail pressure, low side desired. Fuel rail pressure desired. I'm gonna select short term, long term fuel trims. Fuel rail pressure. So that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna start the vehicle right now. Well, before I start the vehicle, let me show you something that I pretty much you know caught my eye real quick from the start. It was actually on the uh, low side fuel pressure. It's currently reading zero. It's actually reading 108.21 psi. The computer wants it at close to low side fuel pressure desired. 63.97 psi so those two pretty much those two do not correlate to each other at this moment one is reading high the other one is reading low this vehicle uh, fuel pressure is between 55 and 72 psi but right now low side fuel pressure is reading 108 which is way beyond the the limit our high side which is the fuel rail pressure it's reading about 55.12, which is the spec with the Keon engine off, which is good. Fuel pressure uh, rail desired, showing 54, which is also good. Short term, long term. See, right now, long term, it's also showing 10.16. I'm pretty sure this is due to the fact that the low side fuel pressure supposedly is not reading properly. The code said that it was a, a low circuit. But at this moment, it's actually reading high. So here we go. So I'm gonna start the engine real quick. Oh, and the low side fuel pressure voltage is showing 4.78. So I'm gonna start the engine and see what happens. And pretty much the low side fuel pressure is gonna actually drop to zero. And then our voltage for the low side fuel pressure is gonna also drop to about zero volts. So here we go. So as soon as I started the engine, our low side fuel pressure 
It's showing approximately 0.00 PSI. The computer wants it at 79.20 PSI. Our voltage for the low side, like I said, which is right here, showing 0.01 volts. And that's the reason we're actually getting that code, low circuit. And the engine right now at this moment is kind of running a little bit rough. Short term is at negative 6.25, it's actually taking away fuel. Our long term right now, it dropped to about three, two to three percent. So this is pretty much the symptoms, of, you know, that the, this, this vehicle is actually showing. That it kind of runs rough at moments. All right, so the vehicle has gone to closed loop. Our long term has gone to 10.16 now. So it's it's just a little bit over the plus or minus 10 percent. Short term showing negative, so it's, so short short term at this moment is actually you know taking away fuel. So if the long term is showing positive 10.16 at this moment. It's pretty much you know, due to the fact that the low side fuel pressure at idle is showing 0, 0.0 PSI when the computer wants it at 80.94. So I'm pretty sure that's the reason why this long term fuel trim is going over 10% at this moment. So it's adding fuel. Actually the, the, computer's, the computer's commanding extra fuel So next, you know, so the next thing I did to it, it was to uh, I rev the engine to see if this PSI would change on the low side. So as you can see there, our voltage low side is still stuck at 0 0.01. PSI is still stuck at 0 0.00. I'm gonna try to expand, you know, you know, just to show you guys the graph. There was actually moments where the uh, low side fuel pressure would actually glitch. It would show some type of a reading, PSI reading. But it, it was one of those uh, moments where it glitches and it dropped back to zero. At this moment, I don't see it. Let me remove this uh, fuel pressure status here. All right, so right now, it's you know, I'm trying to, you know, have you guys focus on the low side fuel pressure PSI and the low side fuel pressure volts. Right now, this uh, symptom is not doing it, it's not glitching. I guess as the sensor warms up, it starts doing that glitch where it actually spikes. Hopefully it does it for you guys. Initially, you know, when I uh, was looking at the on my pre-diagnosis, the low side pressure and the low side voltage were actually, you know, they would tend to glitch. So this is pretty much like the the reason why this code has popped up. It's not a really a permanent uh, check engine light. Where it would, uh, it's not a mail request. It's one of those uh, mail codes that would make the uh, check engine light be off. I'm not sure uh, why it doesn't turn it on, but um, it's one of those uh, silent codes that, for you to know that there's a code in there, you know you have to use a a scan tool. And go into the enhanced mode for that specific vehicle because uh, I went into the uh, OBD2 uh, generic side of the scan tool and and it didn't really give me a code it gave, actually gave me a P0106 which was one of those initial codes that I mentioned earlier 
that the vehicle had but at that time the, the check engine light was actually on but like I said I erased it to see if if these codes would come back just the P018C came back so I'm trying to show you guys this glitch so I'm gonna pause for you guys for until I see this glitch, you know, I'll bring you guys back into this uh, video. All right. All right, guys. So, unfortunately, I was not able to make the sensor act up even after 15 minutes. Even after trying to smack on the sensor, it still, it wouldn't act up. So, you know, so just take my word. Um, the sensor was acting up. It was actually spiking on the uh, fuel pressure, PSI, and the voltage. All right, so the next step is to sh um, is to go to the sensor and show you um, and then show you some voltages to pretty much verify the 5 volt reference, the ground signal, and the signal to this pressure sensor. All right, all right, guys. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna uh, you know show you guys the uh, the signal integrity test by using a san uh, scan tool with the key on, engine off. This voltage on the low side should be reading approximately 5 volts, but it's stuck at zero. So the easiest way to check the, the signal integrity is to buy is by unplugging the connector on the sensor. And this zero volts should jump to, to approximately 5 volts. And if that happens, that means that our signal is pretty much in good condition. There's no opens or shorts to ground. So you know, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Alright. All right, so with the uh, connector unplug, our, our voltage went to approximately five volts. It's showing 4.99 volts. Our PSI, which is our substituted value, it went up to 109.30. So that's the way to check for the signal integrity by using a scan tool. You know, you could also use a voltmeter, back probing the, uh, the signal. And this uh, voltage should also jump to 5 volts with the voltmeter. All right. All right guys, so this is more than the truth. I have already placed the uh, low side fuel pressure sensor. I have already set up the pits. I have the vehicle on key on engine off. I've already primed the engine a couple of times already to build up the fuel pressure once again. So right now, in our low side fuel pressure, we have a, about 97.91 PSI with the key on engine off. I don't really have the specs for key on engine off for this vehicle. But at least we have some type of reading. And our initial um, readings that I showed you at the beginning, it was at 108. So it's 10 PSI less now. Our voltage, low side fuel pressure voltage, shows about 4.36. That's probably around the spec. All right, guys. So I'm going to start the engine. And let's watch our low side fuel pressure, our desired pressure. And our low side fuel pressure voltage at the same time let's you know let's watch our long term to see if this percentage actually drops so here we go all right so so with the engine idling our low side fuel pressure is showing about anywhere from 84 to 87 the computer wants at 84.42. It's around that range. At least we have some type of PSI instead of zero. Our low side fuel pressure voltage, it's about 3.98, which is also good. It has already gone to closed loop. Fuel pressure, 
fuel rail pressure. It's about two. Pretty much the fuel pressure, rail pressure, and the fuel rail pressure desire are about the same, which is also good. So far, everything's looking good. Short term, it's around the zero percent. Long term, it's still stuck at thirteen point two eight. So as as the engine gets um, warmer. Hopefully we see this uh, long-term fuel trim drop to within specs. I'm going to raise the RPM. Everything looking good. Low side pressure is pretty much around the same as a desired pressure on the low side. So we have pretty much you know fixed the problem already. All right, so you know, so I'm gonna probably you know, you know, take a spin to see if this long-term fuel trim drops to you know within spec below uh, 10 percent. All right, so you know, hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Hopefully you guys learned something. This is Eli the Obity Tech. Subscribe if you like.